All right. Thank you very much, everybody, for coming today. Welcome to this event. Um, welcome to the people in Perth, uh, to the people in Perth, and of course to, to those online. Um, indeed, we've got about 75 guests today wow. in one form, form or another, including about 43 online registr um, uh, registrations. So, look, I'd really like to extend my gratitude to all of those people that have, have um, uh, come in today and, and, and registered and tuned in. We'd love to have hosted you all here in person, um, but given the, the in rock uh, building restrictions around COVID, it's, it's difficult to do that. Uh, and we simply couldn't accommodate everybody. Um, I'd also like everybody to please note that the Zoom uh, meeting today is being recorded um, and we'll, we'll look to um, put that online at some point to the future. Um, Really like to thank the speakers that are here today. There's a, there's a whole range of them. Um, indeed, uh, Chief Scientist Peter Clinton, thank you very much for being here today. Um, we have uh, uh, Benny Bellotti, um, Jenny Shaw, Gary Kendrick, Dan Gorgon, uh, Margaret Byrne, and of course, Wamsey Chair, Paul Vogel, um, all speaking today. So thank you very much. So we're here to launch um, our report today, which brings together the last seven decades, seven decades of marine research, um, which is you know, huge, formidable, massive. Um, it's a, a fantastic and valuable resource that describes what we've learned to date about the world's most, uh, one of the world's most unique and valuable marine environments. A total of 775 pieces of literature and 962 metadata entries. Uh, within the publication, um, a snapshot of research in Shark Bay, uh, Garibu. Um, it'll be used as part of the science plan um, that WAMS has been putting together, um, as well as contributing to the understanding of, of Shark Bay in general. I'd really like to thank the authors in particular, Jenny Shaw and Alicia Sutton, um, for the formidable piece of work that they've done. It's huge. And I think you'll agree, it's an absolutely gorgeous document as well. The imagery is beautiful, the maps are fantastic. So uh, it is an amazing resource. I'd like to thank the steering group members who are all here today, um, Gary Kendrick, Gary Jackson, and Al Kendrick. Um, the reviewers of the document as well, so Mervy Kangas, Arani Chandra Pavan, uh, Sean Wilson, Kerry Waples, and Luke Skinner. Um, the maps were provided by DBCA and DPIRT, and they are fantastic. And data assistance was provided by Paul Orange from DPIRT and Luke Edwards, who is a, a Pawsey and Whamsey resource. Um, um, also, thank you very much to Cheryl Calv uh, from uh, Shark Bay World Heritage Advisory Committee and to all of the others that have contributed to the document. And as we said before, there's you know, a formidable number of entries of peer-reviewed literature and of great literature in this. Um, at some, uh, as we get through the proceedings today, there will be the opportunity to put questions um, to um, some of the authors and indeed myself and others in the room today. And for those online, um, you can use the Q&A function within Zoom to uh, post your questions and, and I'll be happy to read those out and address those as we go. So, um, look, it would be wonderful now if I could pass over to the Shark Bay officers and to Benny Bloddy to do the Welcome to Country. To, to this book and it's been a result, the result of it is a lot of 
good information in there that a lot of people are very interested in. Um, well, once again, it's been a good project with Wandu. I hope that you want to say that. So, on behalf of all, all of us, I want to thank you for the opportunity. And uh, we've got a long way to um, making a better understanding of this place for our great future. Um, all those people come behind us. So thank you very much. The kind words. Um, now I'd like to, to um, throw over to uh, Professor Peter Clinkin, who's going to provide some opening comments. Peter. And there's a white X there for you to stand on. Thank you. All right. Thanks very much. Uh, great to be here. And uh, could I just uh, thank uh, the Wildgana people for uh, welcoming us to country. Uh, can I say here in, West, uh, in Perth, this is Wajak Buja. Gaya, Bridi Mam and Bridi Yoga. Nija Waja, Nunga Buja, Nunja Katatsunga, Bridi Mam and Bridi Yoga, Kuru Kuru, Weyayay. So, in the language of the, the Nunga people who've been inhabiting this area for probably 60 or 65,000 years, hello to the big important men and women. Uh, this is the land of the Nunga people, particularly the Waja clan, and I acknowledge their elders, past and present. Uh, I'm delighted uh, to be here this, this afternoon. Uh, to, to say a few words, because this is really uh, a, a monumental task. But what I would say, it's, it goes beyond 70, 70 years of work. It goes on to, it builds on 30,000 years at least of history. So when I read in here that the Wilderness people have been there on uh, at least for 30,000 years, and I suspect probably closer to 50 to 60,000 years, there is a huge tradition uh, of the area. Uh, that, that we're building on, and the scientific knowledge is adding to uh, that wonderful um, uh, amount of information we already have. So, could I congratulate uh, the authors, Jenny in particular, for this, and, and Alicia, Alicia. Uh, Alicia uh, for this fabulous bit of work, because it is such a compilation. Um, I've only had a chance to skim through it, uh, but it is awesome. It covers such a breadth. Uh, of, of information. Uh, it's something that's going to be, you know, on my coffee table. And it's one of those sorts of books that you're going to have there with pride saying, look at the amount of information that's been gathered over such a long period of time. And it's beautifully compiled. It, it, you know, as you said, it, it's just um, presented in the most spectacular manner, concise, easy to read, but all the information's there. So congratulations to the authors on bringing it together. Uh, can, can I just thank everyone uh, up in Shark Bay for everything you've done to contribute to this work as well. Um, it's it's going to be a showcase and I, I think it's uh, going to set a, a precedent for other areas where there is a massive amount of data that really needs to be brought together. Instead of having a whole bunch of disparate, disparate studies that haven't been connected, this is going to be the showpiece of how to bring lots of bits together. So uh, on that note, uh, I'll stop talking. I'll say bora wa Gina. I'll see you later. Thanks very much for the opportunity to be here this, uh, this afternoon. Thanks very much, Peter. And uh, look, now it's my pleasure to invite Jenny Shaw, uh, co-author, to, to um, say a few words about the uh, action as well. Thanks, Jenny. <laughs> thanks, Luke. And thanks, Peter, for your kind words. And indeed, it was really a team effort to put this uh, publication together. And I'd like to thank the um, steering group who had oversight and still have oversight of the Sharp Bay Priorities Project and the researchers who have written and put the project together. So it's been, it's certainly a fantastic effort and I thank you all. But I guess this particular document is also a tribute to the huge number of scientists who have spent days, months and years working in Shark Bay or Budugaru. And we've got some special guests here today, Diana Walker and Robin Anton and Gary Kendrick up in Shark Bay who have spent a large part of their lives doing work in Shark Bay. But they have managed uh, collectively to write over 800 publications over 70 years and on all aspects of the Bay. And I hope that we've captured those in this particular um, piece of work. 
And it's really a special privilege, I think, to work in Shark Bay. It's a unique area that has been recognised internationally as a World Heritage property because of its outstanding uh, universal values. And for me, it's one of those areas that just gets under your skin and you want to return again and again. And I was lucky enough as a five-year-old to go there, to go to Shark Bay for my annual school holidays and have managed to return for work and play uh, ever since. So very, very special area. But it was much later as a young researcher working for Rodlin Anton that I returned in a more professional capacity. And Rod wanted me to learn a little bit more about the whiting fishery. And let me tell you, I had a lot to learn. So Rod had organised for me to go up and fish with Dennis Holt, Bobby Holt and Benny Bellotti, and I hope they are up there this afternoon uh, in the DBC, DBCA office. And thinking back to that time, Rod had a massive regard for those fishers, incredible respect, and I think that the feeling was quite mutual. And um, those fishers, that, that particular fishery didn't ever have a management plan. And that's really unusual in fisheries, not to have a management plan. It's because those guys all shared knowledge. So they recognised what the issues were, they did the science, and they sorted out the rules. So it was an amazing example of a collaborative approach to, say, fisheries in this particular case. I think it was the first example of co-management in Western Australia, and I hope I'm right there, Dan. Um, and possibly even Australia. But certainly it's a very, it's a thriving fishery, it's still sustainable, it's um, contributed to the livelihoods of many, many people and fed generations of Western Australians. And I brought up that story because I think it's actually quite unusual. There's been a massive amount of work done um, in the Bay, but little collaboration, informal or not, with the Mulgana. And Wamsi and all our partners hope that this document, a snapshot of marine science, is really just a line in the sand and that we hope that there's many more collaborative partnerships for marine research and Mulgana in Shark Bay. And in some small way, we hope that this document is part of returning knowledge to country. And as part of that um, process, I'd like to link back to Denham and introduce Professor Gary Kendrick not sure, Gary. Oh, yes, I can see you, yes. Um, and ask you to pass this particular piece of work uh, over to Malgana. Thanks, Gary. I would stand up. Bobby, you want to stand up? Okay. Um, before I hand this over, I'd just like to also get all the, um, the Malgana Rangers to stand up. Can you guys come and join us? Because, you know, I work on um, Wurri and, uh, you know, did I say it right? Just, uh, you want to come and join us? <laughs> he wasn't listening to me. Wurri yeah. I'd just like to say that um, so I've been working with the, uh, the rangers up here. This is uh, my escape from Perth. Uh, I started coming up to Shark Bay back in the early 80s, 1982. I'm a walker up here. And um, all I've got to say is that there's something about the country that captures you. And uh, I've been very, very lucky to have this opportunity to work with Rangers over the, over the last two years. And we're um, making further work. And that's all about restoring the seagrass. And this snapshot came out of a series of meetings you spoke about with us being worried about the loss of that for heaps so, so I'd like to hand this to you, Bobby, um, as a representative of the Aboriginal Corporation and Mulcahy. Uh, and uh, just thank you for, that, for allowing us to do this sort of work. I appreciate that. And on behalf of the Mulcahy elders, pretty happy to accept this. and. Passed on for anybody else that wants to read it, and maybe the data will be beneficial to us in the future. It's a little bit on the country in Shark Bay. Seaweed grass has uh, been something that I've taken a lot of notice in the last 40 years. Even though it has died out in a lot of places, I know for a fact that 
is growing at a place where it wasn't ever like 30, 40 it. years ago. So I don't think that the Murray has defeated. Still, it's still coming back. So that I'm pretty confident in that the future will be like. Also, I think the most detrimental thing that can happen at Bay is the number of people, which is the most detrimental thing that can ever occur. So if we can contain those numbers a bit in every manner, we can be better place in the future. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks very much, Gary, and thanks, Bobby. I'd like to now introduce uh, Dr. Dan Goggin from the Department of Primary Industries and Regional Development. Uh, thanks, Jenny. So, um, look, this is a, uh, a fantastic piece of work to be able to pull all this information together for a for a region, whether it's a small region or a big region. It's a very it's it's a really rare thing to happen, and so I also uh, I guess congratulate and thank thank the uh, the team that's done this. And um, look, I knew the project was going on. And I've got um, some of my colleagues uh, within Deep Herd or Fisheries are involved in it, and so. But I wasn't keeping that close line. And when the when the um, document was delivered um, to me last week uh, and notified me of this, so I, was, I was frankly uh, astounded at the, um, the the summary of information that's in there for, for over all those decades. I did mention Fisheries because we've only been Deep Herd for the last three years out of those seventy years. So uh, again, thanks to that group. I think it's great leadership by um, WOMSI and the, uh, the the team with Luke here and UWA and others. And in case I haven't um, included any, but I know there was a real drive from this very building here, uh, from from this this side of the uh, combined business to pull all this together. Um, and it, it's been a lot of work, and it's been uh, it's it's been going on and on over many many months often in the background from, uh, uh, from, from my level, but it's really good to, to see the end. I'd also just like to say, um, I hope this doesn't sound political, but this is, you know, we, we are at the, we're at the moment of, um, uh, and I, I can only speak from my, uh, fisheries or deep food here, because I'm not over what everyone else is doing, but we're at the real uh, changing point in, in the way my government department um, interacts with Indigenous Australians. I think we're we're really generating some momentum, and this isn't just about marine science. Uh, this is about the uh, the whole engagement across the um, across the whole community. And they're not my words, um, so I'm borrowing them from someone else. But the uh, the order to uh, do things is uh, uh, so I've, so I've read is to uh, uh, respect, connect, and reflect, and then start getting into the actual doing stuff. So I'll just leave with that. Congratulations, team. I'd like to invite Margaret Werner uh, to also have a, 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 an address to the group as um, director of DPCA. Thanks, Margaret. So, um, thanks, Luke. And I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the, of the Shark uh, Bay area, the Mullinga people, and also Peter as chief scientist and um, Paul as chair of the board. Um, it's great to, to be here for this event this afternoon. And of course, everybody in uh, Denham and here to have this co-located virtual um, event is, is unusual, but a, a good way of doing things, a nice way of being able to connect in, in both places. Um, Chuck Bay area is a really important area. It's certainly an important area for DBCA. It's an area that we have a responsibility for, for managing, and it's also the <coughs> a little heritage area, which we manage on behalf of the Australian government. Um, and it's a very unique area, so it has a very high levels of conservation values, but um, very unique, and it's its own bioregion. So we often need to focus our management and science around the uniqueness of, of that area. Work done elsewhere in the world, or even elsewhere in WA, isn't going to give us the right, necessarily the right information to use for this um, particular unique environment that we have. And in DBCA, as you're sure you're all aware, we has a lot of emphasis on our management is underpinned and supported by effective science. Um, all of our decisions need to be evidence-based and science-based. And so having targeted science in this area is really important. 
The Sharp Bay area has had a lot of science investment over, over the years by a range of scientists working there. And so when Wamsi was looking at a bit of a change in approach a few years ago in terms of work going to this sort of program of work or focusing the research priorities around particular areas, Shark Bay was an obvious area to focus on because there was a large body of work going on. It would really benefit from coordination of that science to build, to, to build on that legacy and then be able to take it uh, further to ensure that unique values are, are conserved and protected uh, into the future. So um, it's great to see that that has now led to, um, to this, this document and congratulations to Jenny and all of the, the and Lita and all of the people who worked on, I know you have a lot of people bringing everyone together and lots of workshops and contributions from everybody. It's fantastic to see it come out. I wasn't expecting it to be quite so big, but um, <laughs> it's nice to be able to see that. But we, we were right. There was a lot of legacy of research that's gone on from there to pull it all together, to see how it fits together and to allow that then to drive the priorities into the future is really important rather than continuing with what, what could be, you know, more disparate research, the more it's brought together and, and focused and, and, and drives to really good management outcomes. That's really important from, from our perspective in DBCA and how we manage it. Um, so congratulations to, to Wamsi and everybody who's been involved in doing it. I think it will be a, a legacy document for a long time to come and will set the research priorities that we can focus on and particularly drive that management outcomes that in DBCA we see. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you. Now, we've got a little bit of time now to, to address any questions that might be uh, from people in the room here, people at Denham, or indeed those people online. And I'm just going to flick into my computer and see if there are any questions. None online, which is fine. Anything from the room? We have our wonderful authors here, and we have a, a wealth of uh, experience and um, wealth of experience in, in the room uh, across both venues. No questions. I think we're going to need need you all to sit down and read the document before we can really generate that sort of discussion. Well, on that note, if there are oh, sorry, there is one, Gary. So, what if, if this is a lovely start to to the process of looking um, what to be done in in Shark Bay? What What are the next steps? What What are your plans? What is Wamsi's plan? And how um, and how um, can this be integrated with the multi Aboriginal corporation? Thanks, Gary. So, so the literature review is a really important step in the uh, the planning, um, the science planning, and the marine science planning for the for the area. Um, so, uh, in the background, while Jenny and uh, Alicia have been putting this together. We've also been doing undertaking a gap analysis of, of um, information in the area to really understand where there are uh, a needs for um, the local community, um, the people that work and live in the area, um, and how we might fill those gaps into the future. And so what we're trying to do is come up with a series of, of prioritised um, science programs or science projects within Shark Bay. And that's the next step of the process, and that's something that Jenny has been working very hard on for the last two years. And um, <laughs> we're <laughs> two years, Jenny, and um, we're looking forward to having that document towards the end of this year. Um, so we'll have another very similar event to this one where we'll be able to produce um, a document that really highlights where there are gaps of understanding and where, where as, a, as a group of uh, interested scientists with um, enormous capacity to, to do good work in this area. Um, can focus our attention into the future. Could I just add, perhaps, Luke? Um, Gary, I may may not have heard your question correctly, but um, you mentioned about working with Melbourne. Was that correct? Correct. Yes. So, um, what we're trying to do, and it would be great to um, include that in the science plan, but we've been working with Melbourne and not only with um, people in the community, but with the Melbourne. Aboriginal Corporation and also the Rangers, the DBCA Rangers and the Malgana Rangers. And what we're trying to develop uh, with those groups are the science processes and protocols for, or, so processes and protocols, sorry, for marine scientists working on sea country. So we had a large workshop in December last year up in Denham and it's great to see so many of those Rangers in the room. 
made, and they made fantastic contributions. And we're progressing that, um, and hopefully we'll develop processes and protocols that we can actually give to marine scientists and certainly to the partners, the WAMSI partners, for people who are working in Shark Bay. And they will be tailored to the needs of Malgana as well. So that's kind of the next step. That's what we're hoping to develop um, in the short term. And that will feed into the work, hopefully, in the science plan and the future research in Shark Bay. So can I just add a little bit to that? You sure, you sure can, Gary. <laughs> Gotta watch. Um, the, so to me, um, that would also include the opportunities to create both uh, jobs and industry locally for the community. Do you include that in your uh, science plan? Or do you see that as something bigger that we should tackle? Uh, at a higher state level, your Peter's there, I know. So Peter might, might have a good right to do this. But um, the, what I see here is an opportunity for us to create industry and uh, uh, around conservation in Shark Bay for people in Shark Bay. Any other questions? I must say through my expert moderation, we're right on time. <laughs> <laughs> and it's now my, my uh, pleasure to invite Paul Vogel to the stage to, uh, to close the session. Thanks, Luke. Thanks, Luke. And welcome, everybody. Great to see you all here. Um, these sorts of initial... I'm too tall for this. Look, these sorts of initiatives just don't occur without a lot of skill and dedication from a lot of people. So, so Jenny and Alicia, fantastic, fantastic effort, but also making an event like this happen. Uh, so thank you to the people in Denham, uh, and thank you to everybody for, for making this, this venue and, and this, this event happen. I think what you've produced, is, as, uh, as Luke and others have said, is an incredibly valuable resource, which is really an essential prerequisite before you start filling uh, knowledge gaps to answer those very specific, you know, science and policy and management questions through the science planning process, uh, and that saves an enormous amount of time and money. And I think so. This is a, a resource which I hope will be added to by both Western and traditional knowledge over time and becomes a living, uh, a living inventory of uh, of science in the area. So I'd just like to say thank you to uh, everybody to for making this make, making this happen, and uh, and a special thanks also for, to Peter. For coming along here. I think we're very privileged in the state to have someone of Peter's passion and calibre advocating for science uh, in the state. Uh, and he gets access to a lot of people we don't get access to, so it's pretty, he can be yeah, influential in relation to it. <laughs> <laughs> so, Di, it's he's, the idea, he's, sorry. He's very subtle. <laughs> very subtle. <laughs> no, I know, I'm not good at subtlety, sorry. Never happy. So let, let me just wrap up by saying thank you for everybody for coming along here. I think it's been a tremendous achievement. Uh, and I look forward to this, you know, really setting the path for research priorities in the Shark Bay area. So thank you to everybody for coming uh, and I wish you all well for the future. Good job.